you are going to love today. Today, today we have a legend. Yes, an actual legend on the show with us today at day number 169, world famous watercolor artist, uh, Stephen Queller. Stephen, welcome. Well, gl glad to be here, Eric. It's uh, my pleasure. And I think you're doing a great thing with this pandemic to be able to podcast like this. Thank you. Thank you for being on it. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. We're, we're learning a lot. And, you know, the other day, uh, we were talking about various materials and somebody was talking about casein and, and, uh, how, and, and casein is just basically something a lot of people aren't familiar with. So, uh, one of the reasons I invited you today is because we want to learn more about casein and you're going to do something for us today. What are you going to do? Well, I, uh, you know, I want to talk a lot about, uh, casein and, and it's, uh, visual qualities, handling characteristics, uh, so my, I've painted with casein for over 50 years. And Have I've you really? A new book that's really the ultimate guide to casein. So uh, well, I want to give. I'm going to show it real quick. And then, and then I'm going to show the book out. real quick. That's the that's the new book, and this is a hardbound copy. That uh, we're really really happy with it. I think the color is outstanding. It really came out, and of course I'm known for color, so that All was right. very important. So we have both a hardbound copy, which is a limited edition signed 500 copies. And then we have the softbound um, edition as well. And well, what I'll do is when we come back, I'm going to put up the, um, the, the URL so they know how to get your books. I put it up there right now just briefly. But uh, we're going to talk more about casein. We're going to talk about your career. We're going to talk about your paintings. We're going to see your studio if we can. And uh, we got a lot more. So... Uh, give me a minute. I'm going to drop you off and then we'll be back in just a, a couple of minutes. Sound good? Look forward to it. All right. Thank you. Well, this is Stephen Queller. And uh, Stephen is a, is a, a very well-known artist. And, and I guess maybe I, I say watercolor, but uh, maybe it's because of casein and that's what he's used mostly. So it is a water-based medium for sure. So welcome today. Uh, today is number one. 75 and uh, excuse me 169 and I'm Eric Rhodes publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air magazine and we've been doing this every day live bringing different artists in different perspectives so that you can kind of keep your head in the game stay positive stay focused learn something and see what you can do to kind of avoid all of the negativity that's going on around us right so uh, today we have a winner, a digital subscription winner to Plein Air Magazine. As you probably know by now, Plein Air Magazine is the number one selling art magazine in America. We're very proud of that. At Barnes & Noble, it outsells all the photography and all the art magazines. So we think that's pretty cool. But also uh, the digital edition, and many people get both. The digital edition, of course, comes to you instantly when we publish. And that way you can zoom in on the on the photographs and so on but it also has 20 percent more content so a lot of people like paper a lot of people like digital a lot of people like both and so uh the winner is clint haiti or hadi asadi haiti asadi in uh in sweden I, I don't know where in sweden so clint thank you and congratulations we'll be getting that uh, link to you right away so you can get your this is a one-year subscription uh, to the magazine. So we're honored that we would have it in Sweden. And by the way, please spread it, tell your friends about it, have a plein air party and bring everybody over and paint plein air and learn about it. And we'd love to have that. We, we need more plein air groups around the world. So there's no pressure, but you know, Clint, it's up to you. All right. Today we're going to give away an easel brush clip. I don't have one here to, to show you. I thought, you know, I took it out painting and I forgot to bring it back in for today but we're giving away an easel brush clip. And what an easel brush clip is, it's a device that essentially clips on to your easel. You can put it on this on your plein air easel, your studio easel. I have uh, one that I carry. We had a glitch there, I'm sorry about that. I carry my easel in every Every uh, one of my plein air bags, I have an easel brush clip in every bag. I've got like uh, one in the car, one in this, 
in the studio for around here. And then I've got, you know, one at Austin in, in the studio and one in the car in Austin. So anyway, I put it there. I keep them on my studio easels. It's kind of nice to have them. So that's easel brush clip. And that's what we're giving away tomorrow. And I'd show you a picture of it. There's, there's one. This is on an easy L easel. Um, and there it is on, uh, I don't know, a Strata easel or something, but it just clips on. You can clip it onto a leg or tripod if you've got an easel where it doesn't work. I sometimes clip them onto the panels because it kind of helps me hold the panels. Also, what I discovered, actually some, somebody at one of our events discovered, is it's really great because it's a really, really strong clip. So it's great for stabilizing your painting umbrella. And that's uh, uh, brought to you by Easel Brush Clip. Dot com. And so that's what we're giving away. And that's for comments. And all you have to do is leave a comment and then tell us where you're from. If you would, that'd be nice. And that way we can kind of uh, pick a name, right? That's what we do. Okay. So also, let's see, today at 3 p.m., uh, let's see, I just deleted it by accident. <laughs> well, let me just show you again. I just am sloppy today. I apologize. Uh, today at uh, 3 p.m., we have Zhao Ming Wu, and this is going to be really terrific. You have um, uh, him teaching a painting called Solitude. Now, that's today at 3 p.m., and the way to find these free video samples we're doing every day to kind of keep your head in the game and keep you uh, from worrying about coronavirus and teaching you art, giving you something to do, uh, go to YouTube or Facebook and look up Streamline Art Video. Just search that, and in, in YouTube's case, just hit subscribe. Facebook case, just hit follow, and that way they'll pop up for you automatically. And I'd love everybody to go to YouTube because we're trying to get to 100,000. It's a big, big leap, but we really would like to do that, and we could use your help on that. So this is what he's going to paint today. Uh, you're going to see him paint this, this uh, beautiful image. And, uh, of course, here's the video, and we give a discount every day on the video so you can get the full-length video, and this is... Uh, uh, just a stunning painting. So uh, that's what's going on. I should remind you that we've upped the prize money for the 10th annual plein air salon. Uh, we are giving away $30,000 in cash, uh, including a $15,000 grand prize. That's Tom Hughes, who won last year's award in 2019. We normally give it away at the plein air convention. Well, we had the plein air convention had to be rescheduled for August, and then it had to be canceled. So now we're going to have I believe on the 24th, I'll get that for you for sure, but we're going to have a Friday night at 8 p.m. We're going to do an awards ceremony and give away the money because we need to get it given away and we want to get the, uh, you know, get the next one uh, also rolling and, it, and it's actually rolling now. So we had, we had a cutoff date from before. So now we're going to award the prizes and that's going to be cool. So we'll tell you about that. If you're not on our email list, you should go to one of our websites and and uh, asked to be put on the mail list. And that's pretty easy. So anyway, uh, get your entries in for plein air salon, which is not only plein air, but it's various forms. Uh, you know, it's plein air, it's studio, it's landscape, it's still life, it's water, it's all kinds of things. And so you have a lot of categories. If you win in any category, you're automatically entered into the national competition for the end of the year. I should mention also that I'm doing a blog on Sunday mornings. It's free. It's called Sunday Coffee. And uh, it's usually not about art. It's about other things, life. I actually started this because I wanted to impart some life lessons on my kids, and it kind of went from there. And so you can go to coffeewitheric.com to get that. I have uh, right now, if anybody wants it, I have a free copy of this issue of Fine Art Connoisseur. And uh, the way to get that, is if I can find this, uh, is right here. And you might want to take a screenshot because. It is kind of a weird uh, URL, but if you go there, uh, you can download it. We've, we've now had 500,000 people get this issue of the magazine. That's unbelievable. And so we're pretty excited about that. And this is the thickest, most advertising we've ever had. How we did that in the midst of coronavirus, it's just because we have a super, super team. So uh, anyway, get a copy of Fine Art Connoisseur so that you can see that. And of course, uh, we have coming up in Colorado, and we're going to meet somebody from Colorado in a minute, uh, the Plin Air Convention is going to take place this May, and hopefully uh, there will be some Colorado left. You know, it's a big state, but it's, you know, the fires are awful. I hope the snow is helping. Um, 
And I should mention that we are taking a group of people to Russia to paint in Russia for two weeks. We're going to paint in the big cities of St. Petersburg and Moscow. And we're going to tour because you have to see things while you're there. It's so beautiful. But we also are going to be going into the small Russian villages where people carry their own water and there's cows in the streets. And that's where the real painting takes place. And we have a Russian master, Nikolai Dubovik, who's going to be with us and maybe some other surprises. We'll see. Um, mentioning also the Plen Air podcast. Uh, if you like Plen Air or outdoor painting, you want to learn about it. The Plen Air podcast comes out every single week. You can find it on Apple or iTunes or wherever, but also outdoorpainter.com. Okay. And uh, coming up in uh, very soon, we're going to see fall color like this. If you live in a place where you don't have fall color or you just want a week of painting with friends, this is the only live event that we've been able to do all year. And uh, the, the area we're going to is safe. Uh, we're going to be doing all the correct things, social distancing and so on, but we're going to be painting outdoors two, three paintings a day. And we're just going to, uh, we'll have our meals together and we're going to, uh, you know, we'll sing and we'll, we'll play music and we do portraits at night. And it's really a whole lot of fun. And we have some seats left because we had some people drop out because of the coronavirus. And of course, if you sign up and we, you can't make it because of the virus or we can't hold it for some reason, which I don't think is going to happen. Uh, then uh, we will give you a full money back guarantee on that. So anyway, the only other thing I want to tell you about is uh, probably the biggest thing going on in the art world today, and that is Realism Live. It is going to be the largest uh, art conference in the history of art online, uh, and probably also the largest on person. We in person we've already got 1,200 people signed up. We have people from 30 or 40 countries. I think we have 15 from Australia alone. And, uh, and, and we have instructors from different countries. Realism Live is a virtual conference. It's online. That means uh, you can watch it from your own home. But we have ways that you can communicate with other artists. We put you into breakout rooms. Uh, we also do a cocktail party at night where we all talk to each other, which is really a lot of fun. And we even paint together. We're going to be painting live models. We're going to be painting landscapes. We're going to be painting a lot of different things. So uh, Realism Live has a phenomenal faculty. I'm just going to flip through some of these real quickly. Graydon Parrish, Joshua LaRock, Rose Franson, Daniel Sprick. By the way, got a new Daniel Sprick video coming out very soon. Juliet Aristides, Daniel Gerhartz, Victoria Herrera, Daniel Graves from the Florence Academy, the founder, Jeff Legg. Kathy Odom is going to be doing landscape painting. Kathy Anderson is going to be doing floral painting. And from Ireland, Connor Walton will be teaching the figure. Uh, William Schneider, Tony Sirenai, Mark D'Alessio, probably one of the top plein air painters in the world. Jean Stern will be doing some art history because that's important to know. Stefan Bauman will be doing figure. Cornelia Hearns, Todd Casey doing still life. And Jesus Emmanuel Villarreal. So this is called Realism Live and it's a phenomenal event and you can save. $200, the price is going up $200 on September 30th. And uh, it has a money back guarantee as well. If you go through the first day and you just absolutely don't like it, uh, let us know, we'll give you your money back. And, and of course we'll cut you off. You won't be able to see the rest of it, but you will, uh, that way you don't have to worry. And, and quite frankly, for the amount of money that this is, it's about a 10th of what it would cost you by the time you spent the money to a, go to a conference, fly there, get the rental car and all of that. So it's pretty cool. All right. So today we have uh, the author of two books. This is The Painter's Guide to Color with Stephen Quiller. Uh, this is his new book, uh, The Casein, Casein Painting with Stephen Quiller. And the reason we invited Stephen on is because, uh, uh, first off, he's a legend. And secondly, we, we were talking about Casein the other day and everybody's more curious about it. So uh, who better than to ask the guy who wrote the book on it and, and one of the most popular artists in America. So, uh, Stephen, we're honored to have you with us today. I am so happy to be here. And hopefully our connections are going to work. We live about 9,000 feet elevation and it's been snowing up here. And uh, fortunately, my daughter, Allison, is uh, helping me set this all up. So hopefully it'll come through. All but, right. Well, uh, first uh, of all, thumbs up and say, applause for Allison. Thank you, Allison. Yay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. 
And uh, I wanted to mention that uh, you were talking about uh, uh, my background as a painter. And uh, I consider myself a water media painter. And so I go outside, you were talking about plain air and the plain air magazine and everything. Uh, when I go out and paint, I usually take uh, my watercolor palette and maybe a little gouache. And I like to paint fairly large. You know, most people are working small in their own on location. But I'll work uh, 1824, sometimes full sheets when I'm outside, but I, it's easy to transport the watercolor and the gouache. And I have a backpack and get up in the high country. Uh, when I'm in the studio, I uh, gravitate a little more to acrylic and casein. And uh, most people know what acrylic is. It's a plastic uh, base, a polyresin binder. And, and uh, once it dries, it won't lift and so on. So you can use it on a lot of different surfaces. Casein is less known, but actually before acrylic was invented, it was really a medium of choice. And a lot of universities, colleges, uh, John Sloan worked with casein. There were a number of painters and it goes way back to the Etruscans. So it's not a new medium, but it kind of got lost when acrylic came out. So uh, I fortunately way back in the early 70s started painting with casein and uh, fell in love with it. So uh, it, it's just a beautiful medium. It has a velvety matte visual quality that you cannot get any other way. Uh, you know, acrylic will have kind of a plastic sheen. Each medium has its own advantages and disadvantages, but uh, casein to me is just uh, unique unto itself. So Stephen, I now I, I'm this. curious. I'm curious, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, sure, I know no we've problem. got a slight delay. The uh, uh, one of the things someone told me the other day, and I don't know if this is correct, but they said that you, if you're using gouache, uh, which is more of an opaque medium, uh, if you're using gouache and you put water on it, it reactivates it, reactivates it, but it does not reactivate if you're using casein. Is that correct? It's kind of in between uh, both of those. <laughs> what happens is uh, with gouache, you could uh, you could take it. Uh, out of a, a glass frame uh, two years later and just take a little water in a brush and it would, uh, it would uh, you know, reactivate. Uh, casein, uh, when it dries, uh, some of the, it cures and it, uh, it uh, becomes impermeable uh, eventually, but it could take up to two weeks for some of the pigments. Some dry much, much quicker and some uh, not as, not as uh, uh, long. And, and because of that, uh, it's easier to paint over and build layers than it would be with gouache because with gouache, you've got that undercolor that's gonna come up. And then eventually you can, uh, when it's, you know, after two, three weeks, it's uh, impermeable and you can show it without glass. You can paint on any rigid support uh, from a watercolor board, 300 pound watercolor paper. Uh, you could uh, work with aqua board, which I use a lot. And right now I'm experimenting a little bit with um, maple boards and wood panels, which, you know, back in the medieval era, they uh, were using. So I seal that maple panel and sometimes a walnut panel and paint with casein. And it's a very you can use it more transparent or very juicy opaque, and it just gives you beautiful uh, visual qualities. What do you seal your maple panel with? That's a good question. If I can find it here. Um, here it is, right behind my paper towels, this golden uh, acrylic sealer. Can you hold it up? And I'll do yeah, and hold I it up that, a little higher. Uh, there it is, or a little closer. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so when it's uh, I'm using a, a maple board or you uh, the basswood panels, you just seal this first. Uh oh, we froze up. Well, let's sometimes uh, I'll there, put a little, there we go. So the, anyway, so sometimes I'll mix it up and stain it a little bit uh, to a reddish tone, a maroon tone, a little bluish tone. 
and put that down and then let it dry completely and then start painting on top of it. And it, uh, it just works fantastic. Outstanding. Okay. So, um, uh, which uh, do, do you have, I mean, if you had to make a choice, do you, is, is casein your choice or I know you, you like them all. I like them all. And uh, you know what I find, you know, uh, some people just with, work with one medium, but uh, when I get inspired by a subject, I let the subject tell me which medium or combination uh, works best. And so it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it could be a, a acrylic, um, you know, if I'm doing a, a, a view from the air down on some snow-capped mountains with clouds and so on, that would be a perfect medium for acrylic. If I want something with real rich, sharp color, it might be casein. Uh, many times I'll use the combination. I'll put an undertone of kind of rich uh, casein, maybe in analogous tones, uh, yellows, yellow, oranges, orange, and let it dry more transparent. And then when it's totally dry, come over with casein and I can completely paint over it because it's a very opaque medium. I can thin it down translucent. I can come back and lift to the undertone so I get that yellow orange coming through. And I like to play the two media together uh, for each uh, of their advantages, the visual qualities and so on. So I can- So what I'd like, to, I'd like to do here real quickly because uh, just a shameless plug for, uh, for Jack Richardson, I, I started looking for casein and found it very hard. And somebody said, well, Jack Richardson is about the only one that, that, that has it and can, can carry it. And you said he just came out with a bunch of new colors. And um, so I've got his webpage up here. It's jackrichardson.com. And of course, I'm sure he sells it in the, in the art stores and so on as well. But uh, yeah. uh, tell me about the new colors. Well, what's cool, you know, um, I've known Jack for 30 years, and, and we've uh, done a lot of projects together and actually done a lot of overseas workshops together. Uh, he has a line of brushes with my name on it, and he sells my color wheel. He's a, a distributor to all the major uh, online stores in the uh, in stores in, in the major uh, cities. But... Uh, he, uh, he loves casein, and back when he was um, a 16-year-old kid, he was a runner for an art store, and he'd go to uh, Ramon Shiva's uh, studio where they were making casein. And so it, uh, from an early age, he had that uh, feel for casein. And then uh, it turns out that uh, he started his company, and eventually... Uh, bought uh, casein and the, the Shiva uh, brand. And so uh, last year when he came to me and wanted uh, to have a book on casein, uh, I said, Jack, I'd love to do this book. I've waited 50 years, a lifetime to do it, but I need to have five new colors. <laughs> and uh, he says, okay, let's do it. And so I worked with his colorist and uh, and went back and forth, and he made five new colors that go perfectly with my color wheel. And so it's a spectral palette, the 12 primary, secondary, and intermediate colors that uh, I set up my palette. I don't use any earth colors, uh, but I can get any color that you want with, that, with those 12 colors plus white. And the new colors are a uh, quinacridone violet, which is a red violet, uh, an ultramarine violet, which grays out perfectly with the cad yellows. A, uh, I, I had to make an ultramarine violet blue shade because when I was working with the colorist, they, uh, they sent me this color. I said, we've got to have that color. It's just spectacular. Then there's um, a uh, uh, phthalo turquoise, which is a blue green that grays out perfectly with the cad red uh, scarlet, and then a permanent green light, which goes back and grays out with the quinacridone violet. So those 12 colors, if you use the complements, you can get an absolute perfect neutral 
So I'm going to stop you there. For ju- I'm going to stop you there for just a second because we have a lot of people around the world watching, and a lot of them don't know all of, all of these buzzwords that you're dropping. And so I, I'm going to ask you to explain these things because we want to make sure they understand. You you yeah, use the term complementary. You use the oh. term gray out. Can you talk about those two terms? That is the perfect question. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put this chart up here that I developed starting back in the late 80s or the mid 80s. Does this need to go up a little higher? And that's good. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. So, anyway, what this is, and this is up to date, uh, the last version is 2016, and it's called the Quiller Color Wheel. But this is basically a color wheel for painters. So instead of just saying uh, red and green are complements, which go straight across through neutral to the opposite side, which green, is it more of a yellow green or a blue green, and which red are true complements? So from the artist standpoint, you want to know which colors are going to give you the, the most beautiful neutral. And neutral, a lot of artists use it as uh, gray is the term they use. And most artists, if they've studied uh, John Singer Sargent in the past, they use uh, two colors, a burnt sienna and an ultramarine blue, to give you a beautiful neutral, which you can do with this. But uh, my point is if you're painting the rainforest in Oregon and they're all yellow greens, greens, blue greens, with those magenta undertones, why would you go to an ultramarine blue burnt sienna for your neutral? You'd want to go within this this range here, and you can get a beautiful neutral that's within the color families that you're working with. So with this uh, this uh, color wheel, and we also make it, and Jack Richardson's company sells these in the small portable version, and you can just take that with you and look for colors that are going to neutralize and gray out and go from there. So, you also uh, make a uh, you also make a palette, do you not? I do. I don't have a clean one to show you, <laughs> but uh, I've made a watercolor palette that Jack's company uh, makes. It's a, a, a vacuum foam uh, plastic palette that we started making in uh, 1992, and and it's sold today in most of the major art stores and is a perfect palette, just like the color wheel. You can put those colors around it and use it as an educational tool, not just as a place to put paint. So it works really, really well. Excellent. So um, talk to us about these paintings that you have on the easel. Good question, thank you. Uh, First of all, when I, you know, when I started this painting actually, I did two uh, plain air paintings and, uh, and I brought them in. And from that, I did this drawing. So I kind of re- rearranged the composition a little bit. And I wanted a feel, feeling of airiness and backlight in, in this particular painting. Uh, we live in the high country of Colorado, so aspen and spruce and waterfalls and that type of thing is what I do. So once I did that, and this was done on a uh, a charcoal gray, light gray paper. And I used a litho crayon, which is uh, made for lithography, to do the drawing with. And then came in with a little casein just to give me some color notes. And from that, I put that over on another easel and started working on this painting. Now, this painting was done on maple board. And uh, just like I was talking earlier, so I sealed it and then started working on it. And casein on that smooth maple board is so juicy. You can just move that paint around. You can come back and lift to the undertone or scrape. If you, I don't know if you can see it closer, but, but in some areas here, I just took my fingernail and scraped right through back to a kind of a stained bluish undertone. And uh, most of this is more opaque, but um, I've been having a lot of fun with this painting. But I've done uh, some of these maple board panels, uh, some of them up to 36 by 36. We have our own gallery in Creed, Colorado. And with this pandemic, we thought, 
we're going to be in trouble this summer. You know, no one's going to be here. But it's been unbelievable. I think everybody just came to Colorado and stayed. And so these new uh, panels have really been doing well in the gallery. So that's very exciting for me. Keeps us going. Yeah, so I, I have a question. I have a question I have about paint, painting. Sure. Uh, so I apologize to people for the, the little the noise. What What's happening is when he hears me, it's coming across as a... Uh, an artifact, but when when you uh, painted that painting behind you on the wooden panel, uh, if you're painting with casein, are you laying in the background first and then laying the trees on top because it's drying enough that you can do that? Yeah, but I, but I, I could do it that way, but I actually I just went in reverse, and I do this on a lot of my work. That's what I, I wondered. Started with the, the darker, juicy shapes and just loosely put in the, this, and then came back and painted the light sky holes and negative uh, patterns uh, after that. And then came in uh, positive again with, with a few of those marks. But you can work back and forth. And uh, at this point, you know, uh, I could still probably lift a little of this, but in three or four more days, that'll be impervious. So how long does it typically take for it to dry? Oh, in this country, not too long. You know, very uh, low humidity. Uh, when I'm working on this, if I put in these dark shapes first, probably within, I'd say, 10 minutes. I really? Can, okay. Actually, I'll start sooner than that, kind of moving some of these light shapes in where it neutralizes a little bit, and then let it dry, and then hit the hit the strong opaque lights. But yeah. uh, you can work very quickly with this, as I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, okay, well, we'd love to see that. That's, that's terrific. I will go to the uh, questions, and if there are questions in here, um, you know, or if you wanna put questions in, please let me know. And uh, obviously, somebody'd like to see a close-up of the casein painting. Uh, maybe when you're, you're getting ready to paint, you can show us, move that panel up to the camera, so we can see it. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, are you ready for me to demonstrate or did you have a couple questions first? No, no, I think that's uh, it. Let's do it. I'm waiting for some questions. Uh, I should also tell everybody okay. I'm looking for marketing questions for the podcast. So put your marketing questions in. All right. So yeah, get close up so we can see that. Here, move it down here. Yeah. That's okay. yeah. yeah. All right. Now hold it still. So, so you can see yeah hey can i ask you a question steven absolutely so you have where the uh where the top of the mountain meets the sky you've got basically an orange line uh somebody the other day was talking about painting the spectrum and as the the color, you know, as if you're painting the sun, it's going to get, I think it was Carl Bretzky, it's going to get warmer and warmer and warmer. Is, do you use that kind of like the old traditional bed bug line, the idea of where light and shadow meet, you're putting a high chroma? What's your theory behind that? Well, my theory, and that's a great question. It's been used by artists for centuries. You know, Van Gogh uh, was working with that. Uh, you look at, uh, well, anyway, it goes way back, but I see, this is what I see when I look out, I train my eye uh, to see the transition between the sky and the mountain. And I feel there is a living energy that is radiating into that sky. And so I take uh, the color moving from a red violet to a bit of uh, orange, to a yellow orange, to a pale yellow, and then it transitions into the sky so you get that feeling of energy that moves uh, from the, the living form of the mountain into the uh, negative quiet area. And it's really you beautiful. That, uh, you know, once you start looking for that with fresh eyes, <laughs> you'll see it. Okay, well, that's our assignment today, everybody, is we have to start looking at it with fresh eyes to see if we can see that, that spectral change and that energy. Outstanding. Yeah. 
Absolutely. All right, well, let's, let's do some painting. And in the meantime, while you're getting set up to do painting, I'll just talk about a couple of things here. Uh, first off, uh, you can get a, uh, you can get casein probably from any of the online stores like Blick or otherwise. Uh, Jack Richardson makes it and it's jackrichardson.com, but he's a distributor. So he probably has it, uh, has it uh, through, through all the different companies. I don't seem to have, I've lost the website. I guess I canceled it out. The other thing is that Steven's got a new book out and it is called Queller Casein, uh, uh, KC Painting with Stephen Queller. And then he's got another one, a color book. He's also got a, a series of products, brushes and uh, mixing palette and all that stuff. I've seen all that stuff in the stores for years. I, I, I need to buy it. You, you guys need to buy it. We, have, we all have to help each other during the uh, during COVID times, right? We have to support each other. Are we okay. ready? Yeah, we're ready. Oh, good. Okay, so this is just a tube of, of the uh, casein. Can you do and me a actually, favor? Can you move your easel closer to the camera? Or, yeah, move the camera closer to the easel, or do you want to? Okay, whichever you prefer. Week. Is this yeah, good? better? Yeah, thank you. Can, you. can you see the bottom? Yes. There we go. Okay. And uh, uh, what I was going to say is, we also have a website and sell casein. Uh, oh, you do? You know, so, so it's uh, it's just uh, quillergallery.com. And uh, so we, we sell the brushes and, and casein and other products as well. But, okay, uh, good to know. Yeah. All right, I've got it on oh. the screen. Okay, so, oh, what I wanted to show you, and this will, what I do, now when I'm working with watercolor, I um, have a watercolor palette, so everything's arranged in there. When I'm in the studio, I just use a piece of glass. Can you see that? Yeah. And, and I set my casein up just like I would the color wheel. And so, so you would, would you uh, explain the triangle versus the square? I assume the triangle is primary or the square is primary? Exactly. Yeah, you've got the primary cad yellow light. Um, your uh, Shiva rose is the, like a quinacridone rose. And then a Shiva blue, which is a thalo cyanide blue, are the three primaries. The diamonds are your secondary colors, which uh, form this, if I <laughs> can make this work, forms a triangle. And then your intermediate colors uh, are these um, uh, rectangles or squares. So that's uh, little symbols I use. But you know, I, I painted so much with this. I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> All right. But the nice thing is uh, arranging your palette like I said, is an educational tool. And you you basically, once you get used to it, you just reach across for the compliment or near compliment, whatever you want to do. And you can get the color you want. So you don't have to think about it. And you can take it any way you want to go. So You know, you know that's a very important point for people who might not know this. And that is that your key, your, your palette becomes your keyboard. If you think of it like a piano keyboard, you always know where middle C is. You always know where E is. And it really is the same. You always want your colors in exactly the same place. So however you decide to lay them out, never change the order so that you can instinctively just reach for them. Okay, I don't know if, if we've exactly lost him. That's exactly right. There we are. <laughs> if okay. uh, put... It would be hard to make that sound. But um, of course, it takes mileage on the brush, too. So let's go ahead and start. And I'm just going to, today, I'm just working on a watercolor board. Uh, this is a crescent watercolor board. And I'm just going to show you some of the, um, the, the ways the paint can be handled. And I'm using water. And I'm just going to take some color and just put it down right here. And this is casein. 
it's not watercolor. And I can take that either way. I can go to a, you're talking about your plein air workshop in Vermont or wherever you're gonna go. And uh, I'll be doing one here in, in Colorado in late September. We're all gonna be outside, <laughs> which should be fun. So I'm taking the yellow here. This is just a yellow, different yellows. And now I'm going to add a little of the ultramarine violet to the yellow. And Those colors are so vibrant. Yeah. And the thing that you're going to find, too, is uh, with casein, is that uh, the lights dry darker and the darks dry lighter. So really? what you see is not what you end up with. So now I'm just coming in a little thicker, just bringing this up, letting some of this move down. I can take water and thin that down, play with it, who knows? How do you but, keep the uh, paint yeah, from drying out on your palette? Down. Yeah, I wish you could see the palette here. How do you but keep the paint, how do you keep the paint from drying out on the palette? Oh, very good. Uh, I just have a atomizer that I use. I can spray that on, get a little texture if I want to. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to take this color all the way to a neutral. So we'll just uh, let this happen. And you see, as I move over here, I can take this all the way to a gray. And we'll just um, move that in. And so I'm just uh, fitting this down. So it's more like a watercolor painting at this point. But um, just working with a large brush and letting it happen. And I can come in and scrape, play with this, and come in with a juicier mark if I want to. Just taking the, this is um, that uh, violet blue shade, but uh, now I'm going to come in and start to push a little more uh, op translucent and opaque uh, use of the paint. And so we'll, we'll just get a little more value popping in, and, and we'll just uh, lay this up here, just kind of dry brush playing with this, letting it move across the composition, coming back to a, to a deep color. If I want a stronger note, and I'll just take this up here. I'm going to put this in here first, just kind of moving it diagonally down the picture plane. And here I'm using a quinacridone violet along with a thalo green. And so I can get a real good strong dark if I want to. And I'll just take that in and work with a little water. And this is, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to paint uh, outside uh, with this too, uh, plain air. But in my country, it dries pretty quick. So you've got to, you've got to know what you're doing to, to stay with it. But um, anyway, it's, it's a lot of fun to work with. And I like it. So here, I'll uh, just lay this in. Again, coming in just a stronger mark in through here taking a little of this, neutralizing some of that, letting some of that just kind of come down into these areas where I get a little more of a feel for this, maybe coming in a little more to a neutral uh, in through here. We'll just kind of pop that in where you start to feel a little movement 
coming in with a stronger dark red uh, violet against this yellow green. You see this yellow green note, the complement is the quinacridone violet. So why not pop that in there and just let it let it do what it does, you know, and play with it. You got about now, 10 minutes. Go ahead if you have a question. That's, uh... Oh, I just said you've got about 10 minutes. Oh, good. That's <laughs> good to know. Uh, I'm just using my fingers here. You know, they, they found that uh, painting by Da Vinci, and they weren't sure if it was his. And they finally found the DNA with the fingerprint to determine it was. So from that moment on, I always leave a fingerprint at a certain <laughs> point. <laughs> Just uh, kidding. But uh, so now I'll just, uh, this is starting to dry. See, if I use the paint a little stronger, uh, less water and more pigment, then it's going to hold. It's not going to drip down on me. And I can uh, let that work for me. So I'm just kind of playing with this, kind of making this a negative painting of a tree just for fun, letting a little dark note pop in through here. And carrying this diagonally down the picture plane. So I just feel that moving up and maybe just on the white paper, we'll just take a little, make a few more notes. Now with this, uh, if this was dry enough, it's not quite dry yet. You can see, I, and I like to make marks with my finger and, and use that. You have to get those fingernails just right. But um, <laughs> anyway, it gives you kind of a nice spontaneous energy that you couldn't get with a brush. And so we'll just hit that, get some stronger notes in here, and hit a little dry brush. Note, uh, again, I can get some good darks. Uh, casein, a lot of people think you can't really get a dark with casein. But, uh, and that's addressed in the book. It talks about different ways to get darks. But, um, but uh, you can't. And what kind of brushes are you using? Well, I, right now I'm using that uh, gray matter brush you know, that uh, Richardson makes. But um, I have my own brushes. I started with that two-inch um, flat. And that um, has my name on it, actually. A lot of these brushes are the 7000 series uh, that Richardson makes. And, and uh, I use those a lot. Yeah, what I like about paper. those is that they, the, the ferrules, is it ferrules, fennels, the silver part? It's not silver, it's gray, and it doesn't burn out your eyes when you're painting outdoors. Yeah, those, that gray matter, that's, that's the whole idea, is you don't have to worry about uh, uh, reflection, that uh, bright re reflection. So, so here, now this is just uh, my water media brush that I use a lot. And you see how the neutral, like this is a neutral, brings out the pure hue. So if I come in here and take that neutral, it's going to bring that yellow-orange out. So that's what uh, neutrals can do. But what I want to do now, I'm going to clean my palette and hit, just uh, for this quick demo, one more thing. And we'll make that happen. Get a new paper towel. All right. I use a Viva paper towel. <laughs> They're my favorite. And I go through them. But when I'm outside painting, you know, plain air, if one gets saturated, 
I can take that and open it up and hang it over my easel and it dries out, you know, in the high country here pretty quickly. And I can then come back and, um, and um, you know, use it again. So I, I clean my brushes with, with leaves. Yeah. So now I'm just coming in with a little ultramarine blue. And what happens, as I mentioned, the, the lights dry darker and the darks dry lighter. So, so uh, when I put this first down, the ultramarine blue is one of my favorite colors. It just sings uh, when it dries. So I use it a lot. But here I'm just going to take it and paint. I guess I want this a little lighter. Let's see if I can get this to work. Um, I'm going to come in and paint negatively Ooh. Ooh, that's around good. this area and paint the this background. You see, so it's it's going to have a feeling like. Um, this is like a sky behind it or something. I can yeah. come through, scrape some of these patterns in through here, and just play with it. But uh, so I can work uh, front to back, but I can also work uh, from dark to light, you see. So now I'm just kind of pushing this up, and when this dries, it's going to come to life. It takes a little bit of time, but it's uh, so much fun. And uh, so I'm just playing. This is now with that two inch flat brush. I'll just take that out and, and bring that in, you see. So I'm now just painting that this color over that background color. And just shifting how you see that paint. Yeah. And then I might uh, repeat that color in a in a stronger way. I'm going to give you three more minutes. Three more minutes. That's yeah. All Sorry. I mean. That's good. Okay. I'm going to just bring a little of this down and through here. So I'm repeating some of that ultramarine blue uh, that's up above and just uh, threading it just like a weaving or something through the composition. It maybe have a little bit of something going on in the foreground. And let that diagonal rhythm kind of just carry through into this lower area and then scrape it off. So this was done on watercolor board, but I could do this on a uh, 300 pound watercolor paper or, uh, you know, uh, aqua board panel, a, uh, a uh, you know, just a canvas panel, uh, any rigid surface you can work with the casein on and uh, let that dry and then it cures. And you can actually show that if you're working with uh, a board and such and show it uh, without glass. So that's an advantage too. Obviously with wash, you couldn't do that. So anyway, well, that's, that's, uh, that's the idea. Wow, that's fascinating. That actually, to me, it looks like skyscrapers in New York with trees in Central Park in front of it. <laughs> that's just what I was trying to do. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> well, Stephen, uh, it has been a real honor to have you on today and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. What we would like you to do is to finish what you're working on there, if you're willing, sure. and then maybe post it in the comments later on uh, whenever you get it done. Sounds perfect. I'll play with uh, it. Allie can help happens. you with that. All right. Yeah, well, can. thank you so you much. And, and I want to tell everybody that Stephen's got books, uh, brushes, a casein paint, which he was just demonstrating in case you just tuned in at uh, quillergallery.com. So Stephen, thank you so much. 
got to make a couple quick announcements here, and then I'm going to hop off. All right. Okay, so thank, thank you, you again. Thumbs up and applause for Stephen Queller. Thank you. All right. So that was fascinating. This guy is amazing. Um, wow. So you can get his books uh, at quillergallery.com, his brushes. Uh, also, the paints are made by, they're casein paints, and they're made by Richeson. And you can probably get those wherever paint is sold, but uh, also get them at Stephen's website. Why not help him a little bit, right? We're all going through coronavirus time, so a little extra money never hurts anybody. Uh, I want to tell you guys today at uh, 3 p.m., we have Zhao Ming Wu is going to be demoing uh, one of our, he's going to do this painting. Every day at 3 p.m., we are doing a free video sample, not the entire video usually, but uh, free sample. So you'll see Zhao Ming Wu showing how he did that at, at uh, 3 p.m. on Streamline Art Video at YouTube or Facebook. Also want to tell you guys uh, that we have something coming up. We're going to actually announce faculty this week. Uh, if you're a member of, if you read Watercolor, American Watercolor, our newsletter, uh, if you can't, if you don't have it, go to AmericanWatercolor.net. But we're going to announce Watercolor Live, our virtual art conference for water media. And we've got an incredible lineup of people, and you're going to find out who they are this week. But I should mention, don't let that stop you from registering for Realism Live, because these are the, the finest realists in the world uh, who are going to be teaching. Uh, Jesus Emmanuel, Emmanuel Villarreal, <laughs> Villarreal uh, Cornelia Herons. Uh, Todd Casey, Stefan Bauman, Joan Stern, Mark D'Alessio, uh, William Schneider, Tony Serenai, Con Connor Walton, Kathy Anderson, Jeff Legg, Kathy Odom, Daniel Graves, Victoria Herrera, Dan Gerhardt, Juliet Aristides, Rose Franson, Daniel Sprick, Josh LaRock, and Graydon Parrish, all at Realism Live. And the price goes up on the at the uh, end of the month, uh, this month, 30th. So uh, and if you can't make the dates, there are replays with it. So uh, it's going to be huge. And the price is really low compared to what you would have to pay to go to a live in-person event. And it's rare that we get these people together because, quite frankly, we were able to do it because of coronavirus. So you're going to have four days plus an optional beginner's day if you're a beginner and go to realismlive.com. Uh, everything we do, you can find it at streamlinepublishing.com. We do books. We do uh, videos, art instruction videos, products, magazines, newsletters, etc. It's all there at streamlinepublishing.com. Everything. My name is Eric Rhodes, and I am honored that you guys would attend. Thanks again, and thumbs up for Stephen Queller. He is a rock star, and truly a star in this art world. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 170, uh, 170 days in a row. Hard to believe. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher a fine arts connoisseur and plein air magazine. Have a great day. And again, thank you to Stephen Queller.